Welcome to the Introduction to Traffic Flow Theory Part 2. Today I'm going to continue to emphasize some traffic flow basics using visualization and thinking rather than memorizing recipes and formulas. The first tool of the trade that we'll discuss today is the time-space diagram. So imagine a straight highway with a, and that you're standing on the roadside and there's a 22-foot long vehicle traveling at 30 miles per hour in uncongested conditions. So how close together might we expect two vehicles to be traveling comfortably? Because obviously there are going to be more than one vehicle on the road. So you might place a second vehicle some, some comfortable distance behind. And based on our knowledge of the, the DMV handbook that recommends one vehicle length spacing for every 10 miles per hour of speed, we can place this second vehicle maybe three vehicle lengths behind. So in this case, it would be 66 feet between the two vehicles. So let's think about what this translates to in terms of time. So what is the headway, which we know from before is a point measurement? So if we forget what the definition of headway is, we just go back to what the units are. And if we recall that the units for headway are seconds per vehicle passing a point, we can then calculate the headway here, which is the time needed to travel four vehicle lengths. So from where the nose of this second vehicle is up to where the nose of the first vehicle is, you can see that's a total of four vehicle lengths. It's the spacing, which is three, plus the length of the first vehicle, which is four. So in order to do that calculation, we can again use dimensional analysis. The distance that the vehicle is traveling is a total of 88 feet. That's four times 22 feet and the speed is 30 miles per hour and if we want to express the headway in seconds which we normally do we just use dimensional analysis here 3600 seconds is equivalent to one hour one mile is equivalent to 5280 feet so very conveniently the headway here would be two seconds so of course we remember that the inverse of headway is flow so we can simply take the inverse of that one vehicle every two seconds times 3,600 seconds per hour, just dimensional analysis, translates to a flow of 1,800 vehicles per hour. So we've uh, translated two vehicles on the road with a particular spacing to a two-second headway to an 1,800 vehicles per hour flow. So if this particular roadway is an arterial with traffic signals, as we often encounter, what happens when we add a cross street? So basically this creates two interrupted traffic streams that now must share the right-of-way in this intersection right here. And if it's controlled by a traffic signal, we can make some assumptions about uh, how long the cycle is. And let's just say for the sake of discussion that we have a 60-second signal cycle and that there's a balanced set of flows with 30-second phases for each approach. So what does this do to the, the values that we calculated uh, just a minute ago? And we might ask the question in this way, what is the capacity of each approach? So basically what we've said is that the original flow of 1,800 vehicles per hour gets cut in half because it's only allowed to pass through the intersection about half the time. So what this translates to is a reduction in the maximum flow that can occur on this roadway from 1,800 vehicles per hour to 900 vehicles per hour. So when you're thinking about traffic flow on a freeway lane, versus an arterial lane, remember that this concept of shared right-of-way essentially cuts the flow in half. Okay, so let's talk about how we use some of these basic measurements to create a time-space diagram. So consider that we take some aerial photographs of a particular highway at, a, at particular time increments. So this is the first aerial photo taken at time one. And so in this case, you can see there are six vehicles on the road. So, um, and they're a little bit different. So at successive time intervals, so if we take a photo every second or every five seconds, um, we can start assembling little strips of aerial photographs until we obtain essentially a, a graphic that looks like this that, that allows you to watch how each colored vehicle is moving over space and time. So we can even animate this and essentially turn this into a little video. And so you can see, I'll probably play this one more time. We go back, you can watch how this, uh... there we go. 
how this plays a little film, and if you tr watch each vehicle, you can see how it moves over time. So a time-space diagram is a really interesting um, tool because it really is a video on, in two dimensions of what each vehicle is doing. So usually on a time-space diagram, we represent each vehicle by one point, and so if all those points are tied together, the time-space diagram might look something more like this. And then we can sort of remove the gray background, and we can sort of chop this up and put this on a regular time-space plane like we might be used to looking at. So again, time is on the x-axis, distance is on the y-axis, and the time-space diagram is a fundamental tool used for transportation evaluation. Usually traffic is moving up from bottom to top in these kinds of diagrams. So uh, we can construct them conceptually from aerial photographs. Uh, we can also construct them from high resolution GPS data. It allows us to study the movement of vehicles and their interactions from point to point. Uh, one vehicle is represented by something that we call a trajectory, where there's one X for every T. The nice thing about these diagrams is that the speed is simply the derivative of the function um, or the slope. So at any point along the trajectory, that is that vehicle's instantaneous speed. The curvature of the trajectory represents the acceleration of the vehicle, which is the second derivative of the distance. So when we have more than one vehicle on the diagram, we can look at, at their interactions. Um, and of course, you might have two trajectories uh, that intersect, and that basically means that passing has occurred. So what else can we do? Here is a simplified uh, time-space diagram with seven vehicles. The nice thing is that we can translate our fundamental uh, variables in traffic flow theory. We can see them on the diagram. So as you see the vertical spacing between the vehicles, you can just translate that uh, directly into the spacing the value of spacing, the front-to-front -front distance at a given time. And then you can also see the horizontal distance between the trajectories. And so that's a time measure because the horizontal uh, dimensions here are time. So this distance here is just the headway uh, between vehicles uh, for, for a particular point. Okay, so spacing is something that is relevant for a particular time and headway is something that's relevant for a particular point or location on the road. You can also, uh, because this is um, uh, a time-based measure, um, we can envision that we're standing by the side of the road at location x0, and for a particular time interval t, we observe two vehicles. So the flow during that time interval is simply the number observed divided by the time interval. So flow is n divided by t, in this case, it would be two divided by t, and we express that in vehicles per hour. So for the time-based, uh, point-based measures, we, we uh, cut a horizontal slice. And that's the value of flow. So when we're thinking spatially, uh, we can cut a vertical slice, and we can observe at a particular time, t0, over a particular distance, in this case l, the number of vehicles here, is 6, so we can calculate the density, which is just uh, the number of vehicles observed divided by the distance, so the density for this particular segment is 6 divided by L, as shown. So let's just look one more time at a time-space diagram. First we have a distance-time plane, x, y axes. This is a trajectory of one vehicle, we'll call it vehicle I. Um, so the speed is fluctuating a little bit. Um, we can observe for this particular picture the segment length, and we can observe the actual travel time. It's just the, the arrival time at the end of the segment minus the, the, the departure time at the beginning of the segment. At any point along this trajectory, the slope is the instantaneous speed. So there are a few other things we can measure if we uh, pinch the curve at the end and the beginning, and we draw a line as shown. The average speed is simply the slope of that, um, of that line. So it's the arrival time minus the departure time, um, and then you divide the segment length by that particular time and obtain the average speed. We might, for this particular roadway, have in mind a free flow speed, which basically means how long would it take 
to traverse this section of road under uncongested conditions or at three in the morning or something like that. And this is typically what, what we do in uh, traffic analysis. And then we can compute the delay, which is the difference between the actual travel time and the free flow travel time. So just to, to note um, that the delay cannot be negative, and you might want to think about what some of the implications are of defining delay based on free flow travel time. Um, so the trajectory that we've shown here is a powerful tool in and of itself. Um, I'll just add now a few other trajectories just to indicate the interactions between vehicle I and a bunch of other vehicles on the road. And just to remind you again um, that we can calculate the density. You take a, a vertical slice, count the number of vehicles. In this case, it's 6. And then if the segment length is, is D, then the density is just 6 divided by D vehicles per mile. And again, the horizontal slice at a location X, you count the number of vehicles, in this case, seven vehicles pass by um, during measurement interval T. So you can calculate the flow as seven divided by T vehicles per hour. If speeds are measured, of course, if you have a radar gun at location X, then you can also compute the timing speed as we discussed before. So in summary, presented the concept of creating a vehicle trajectory Assembling multiple tra trajectories creates a perfect record of all traffic parameters, and time-space diagrams can reveal travel times and delays. We can also use them to assess spatial measures such as space, spacing and density, as well as uh, point-based measure, measures such as headways and flows. Thank you very much for your attention.